All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at uh, Ultra X uh, Yolo <laughs> Vision 2024. Super excited to be yes. here uh, with one and only Glenn, who's the founder and CEO <laughs> of Ultra X. Glenn, a long time due. I'm, I've been uh, seeing all the great work that you all have been putting together. Mm -hmm. Ultra Athletics have been at the forefront of it, and uh, you all have been working so much. Uh, so excited to chat with you today on the Robert Show, and uh, I'm happy to be here at Vision 2024. And I'm happy to be on the Rabbit Show. This is my first time, so I'm equally excited. Thanks for having me. That's awesome. <laughs> I've seen like um, in your obviously in your session, you've made like product announcements, <laughs> some great announcements. Yolo 11 has arrived. Yes. We are excited about it. I'll obviously <laughs> be sharing a lot about with our audience in our newsletter, but I mm. uh, would love to learn from you firsthand. What have you been listening about, uh, you know, from the community here? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. we want to also get into, into you know, mm. obviously the product announcements that you all have made. Yeah, yeah. No, of course. I. So I think uh, we've been focusing a lot ever since we launched Yolo V8 last year right. on smoothing out the wrinkles in it. So we want to make sure that there's no bugs, that it works correctly, mm. and that it's easy to use, that it's well documented. And so we've been just really busy kind of doing these things that aren't so sexy, but are, I think, really important to a good product. Um, and then after, after about a year of that, we realized, hey, wait, wait, we need to work on the architecture too because the space is moving and we need to get back to work on the R&D. Right. And so we did that last like four or five months. Um, we spent all of our remaining credits. Azure gave us $150,000 of credits, and that's how we got YOLO 11 here with all that R&D. Uh, and here we are with this. And so we, we went back to basics. We took a look at the architecture, the training, the loss functions, and we read all the papers that had come out, mm. and we put it all wrapped up into a nice, neat package here today. I love it, and uh, thanks for sharing that. I'm kind of also excited about you know what inspired the major changes we are seeing in YOLO 11. Can you walk us through the journey from YOLO Vision 5 to now, it has been like uh, amazing, but I'm pretty sure you've seen all the hard work that you and your team kind of puts mm -hmm. into the game. So kind of curious to know a little about that. Yeah, it's, for me, it's pretty shocking that we've been doing this for so long. Um, <laughs> so when I launched YOLO V5, that was May of 2020, and I, it took me about a year, year and a half to put that together. And so uh, I guess it's been about five, six years now that I've been doing this. Um, and I've, I've learned a lot, mostly from the community. Uh, right. So I, I wouldn't have been able to do it without the open source community, and they deserve a ton of credit here. I, I think hearing all the feedback from them and getting the contributions from them. So I think we have about 800 open source contributors that actually have contributed code. Wow. So when you're using YOLO model, it's it's not just the Ultralytics team, it's, it's 800 individuals out there exactly. uh, that really care, that are really trying their best to help improve this for everybody. And so. it becomes like a you know, obviously the community feedback, the community contributing, that kind mm -hmm. of gives you a lot of, uh, you know, and you and your team to, you know, be more motivated towards uh, <laughs> going and, you know, obviously striking that uh, satisfaction. For the yeah, yeah, it, it, well, it keeps us busy. So right. <laughs> every day we wake up and there's uh, there's new bug reports, a new feature requests, and it's, um, it's very satisfying, I think, True. to be able to, to fix things, to push products, and to see people actually using them in the real world. So, what we ultimately strive for is impact. We want to have a positive impact out there and we want a level playing field in terms of technology. So we want to make the best models that we can and we want everybody to be able to have access to them. Yes. Uh, from the smallest person to the biggest company. Yeah, I'm also kind of curious to know a little about, you know, the industries. So yeah, what, yeah. what <laughs> industries would benefit the most uh, from the improvements made in YOLO 11 and uh, how do you envision its adoption across different sectors because that's something pretty important for the audience here. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I think if you ask a parent like who their favorite kid is, they're gonna, you know, they, they're not gonna answer. And so I, I'm kind of stuck too. So YOLO is used just everywhere. Um, right. We, we have a slide, we didn't pull it up today, but it's, it's the companies in the different verticals that are really applying it in so yep. many different ways. And it's being used everywhere from, from energy to manufacturing, to banking, to retail. Uh, to gaming, uh, to even to finance. It's, it's, so it's just, uh, it's all over the place. And the use cases are things that I wouldn't have imagined myself. And so the interesting thing is that we're sort of creating the ingredients, but other people are putting their own salads together. Mm. And there's so many ways uh, to use computer vision. And uh, I think they're only going to grow as the models get more performant and uh, and better. So. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, YOLO has always been known for its, you know, speed and accuracy, right? Mm -hmm. So how does YOLO 11 further improve on these aspects and what are the key uh, upgrades that <laughs> we can see, technical upgrades? Yeah, absolutely. So, oof, okay, so working on, on YOLO R&D, it's, uh, it's really challenging because you want to go in three different directions. You want to mm -hmm. make the model smaller 
You want them to get more accurate, but then you also want them to be faster. Faster, right. Um, not only faster, but also faster on different platforms, like on CPU and on GPU. And basically all the things I just mentioned are really competing interests. So if right. you make it smaller, it's probably not going to be more accurate. So, so you really, like your job as an ML developer and as a data scientist is uh, a balancing act. Like you want to gauge the community mm. feedback. Right. And you want to sort of act as, um, as uh, a decider who, who makes the compromise. Like, like where do we put an architecture change that's going to, say, make it faster at the expense yeah. of accuracy? It's a tough job. Um, but I think, uh, luckily, you know, we've got a great team here at Ultralytics, uh, which we're looking to grow, by the way. So if you are looking for an exciting startup to join, let us know. And, uh, of course, the community again. So I'd say YOLO 11 is about uh, half by internal R&D and 50% from uh, external research that we've been able to integrate into the models. Love it. Uh, those are fantastic insights. Yes, for those who want to, you know, wish to join something as cool as a startup that you can see here, Ultralytics, uh, I'll definitely share a link as well. You all can have a deeper look into it and share, uh, go out and, you know, reach out to but, Glenn as but well. Al but also be careful because you might be here giving the talk next year. So, <laughs> so you get that opportunity as well. Yeah. I take it as an opportunity for sure. Uh, so that's awesome. Can you also tell us a little about uh, the focus of energy efficiency and sustainability uh, yeah, yeah. in YOLO 11? Because that's something yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know pretty important yeah. and how important this is for your team and the customers mm -hmm. well. that it's important for so many reasons so we want models that are very small and very efficient and very fast right. uh, from so many perspectives so there's the environmental perspective like we've seen a lot of new technologies like crypto and AI consume enormous amounts of energy and not all of that is clean the world's yeah. moving towards clean energy but I'd say not fast enough and so we want our models to be uh, trainable in, in less epochs with uh, less augmentations and less data. Um, and so we're working really hard on that. The smallest model that we have is just 2.9 million parameters. Mm. It's like the size of a JPEG. It's, it's really crazy. And the largest, the very largest YOLO 11X model, it's about 45 million parameters. So even the largest model is incredibly small when you look at the other models that are out there. Uh, so these, you can train them on, on a really cheap GPU, like a, like NVIDIA GPU from five years ago, for example, will train one of these models. You don't need an H100, you don't need a lot of resources, you yeah. just kind of need some excitement and uh, a bit of coffee. That helps me. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, also, uh, talking about, you know, obviously all the work that you guys have been doing, I'm pretty sure you all have faced so, so many challenges out there, right? Oh, yeah. So talking yeah. about the challenges, uh, what are the key challenges you faced during the development of YOLO 11 and how did the team overcome them? It's kind of, uh, mm -hmm. because I know the team has kind of worked pretty hard on this. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, so on, on our side, there's challenges, I think, in, in just having such a remote team. Uh, we, have, uh, we have people in China, we got people in, in the US, we have people in Japan, and people here in Spain. Uh, so even, even wow. just time zones. So even just like setting up a meeting becomes this complicated thing where like some people are there at one in the morning, some people are there at like one in the afternoon. Yeah. Um, and, but beyond that though, I think is, is compute. And so unfortunately, mm -hmm. you know, to really do a lot of R&D, e even though we're in the computer vision space, it's not as expensive as LLMs by, uh, by a wide margin, but we still need GPUs. Um, and right. at the moment, we're right. still a small company. Uh, so we've done all of the R&D with a one a A100 server that we had and these Azure credits. So we're, uh, I suppose, very efficient uh, on the cost side too. Yeah, so. that's awesome. Uh, also, a little about the future. So looking mm. forward, uh, what can we expect from Ultralytics in terms of the releases, innovations, I know y'all are always trying out there and uh, you know being as innovative as possible. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Are there any specific areas of AI are you excited about to explore next? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, okay. So when I started doing YOLO, people would ask me questions about things like deployment or the data sets, and I'd say, oh no, that's not my problem. That's, that's, uh, that's something else, you gotta do that and then you show up here. But then I realized, wait, I, I should help them with that too. And so we've tried to help people more on the deployment side, but I'd say not so much on the data set side. And the data set side is the biggest single kind of pain point. So to, to train a YOLO model, you need a data set. And that requires a lot of annotation. And now there's really cool tools like SAM and SAM2. Mm -hmm. And there's really cool multimodal models like GPT4 Vision and other ones that are open source like Lava that I think can really bridge the gap there with kind of like auto annotation. So you can, I don't think we can take the person out of the loop, but I think if we take the person from annotating to reviewing, I think we can make them much more efficient and use this yeah. time better. Yeah. So I think, I think just helping out the whole workflow to get people a solution. Because at the end of the day, people 
like models, but they really like solutions better. So we want people to get that result faster, and we need to help them not just with a model. Uh, I think we're doing a pretty decent job of that now, but I think in getting the data into the model and then deploying that model once it's trained. Very important. Uh, one last question for you, Glenn. Uh, if folks want to reach out to you, learn mm -hmm. more about Ultralytics, learn more about YOLO11, where can they do that? <laughs> oh, absolutely. So uh, GitHub is the best place. Uh, we're first and foremost an open source company. Uh, so stop by the Ultralytics GitHub repository uh, or just go to Google and just type Ultralytics or YOLO V8 or now YOLO11 and GitHub's probably going to be the first thing that pops up. Um, if you're looking for uh, possibly a new employment opportunity, if you want to join the team, then ultralytics.com is the website and uh, it will take you from there. We we do a lot of social media too, so we've, we're trying to build up a YouTube channel also and we got nice. tutorials and docs and so on. So. Yeah. If there's something uh, that you need that we don't have, let us know too, because uh, we're trying to, you know, not just help people on the models, but help people with like the support and the documentation exactly. they need for it. Love it. <laughs> First of all, congratulations for YOLO 11. Uh, great <laughs> announcements, you. great product announcements out there, and uh, definitely looking forward to learning more, keeping in touch with uh, what Alteratics <laughs> is doing in this space, uh, and uh, keeping the conversation going. And thanks for visiting yeah. the Robert Show. Such a pleasure hosting you. No, thank you so much. I think the AI space is exciting. We never know what's going to come next. And for me, um, I also can't wait to see what's next. So thank, thank you for you. having me. Thank you. Thank you. Such a pleasure. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. <laughs>